I think a lot of folks with ADHD might struggle from out of sight, out of mind. And I had no idea just how extreme that was for me. So I have a really poor memory. And if it's not in front of me, it doesn't exist. And so I need some place to capture everything. Uh, even my husband knows he can ask me something really basic, you know, even an errand. And if it's not in Notion, it's, it's just not going to get done. So it needs to be on a calendar. It needs to be a notion, needs to be somewhere visible. So getting into the habit of, uh, you know, storing information that is interesting, taking notes about what I'm learning. Otherwise it's that, you know, again, that dopamine seeking, Ooh, learning new things, learning new things. But if I'm not translating what I'm learning into something that gets moved from working memory into long-term memory, then it's just kind of in one ear and out the other. So it's really about uh, that habit of kind of collecting, curating, and also kind of extracting my own insights from what I'm learning. So the other thing I love about it is you get into the habit of capturing information in your own way and putting it into your own words. And you get to the point where your system is actually a lot more curated than if you were to go to Google and search something like now I can actually go to my system and I can kind of sift through my own research, which is a lot more, you know, tailored to, to what I'm paying attention to. So it's been, it's a game changer to get into that habit. One thing I think that I'm, as far as having like my second brain or whatever it is, mine is sort of chaos compared to like Marie and Brian. They're like, like notion world and obsidian world. I think Brian, you're trying Dendron now, which I haven't looked at yet, but I, mine's just kind of chaos. Like I craft, I would say is my central one. Um, and then I kind of like, I kind of use, I'm, I'm using thunk notes for journaling. I'm using just like Twitter. Like I search my own Twitter all the time to remind me of stuff. Um, and, and just my desk, like random things scattered around on my desk. But I think one thing that it hasn't helped me with right now is the relationship stuff. That's kind of something I'm trying to get better at, like figuring out how to kind of build, you know, like a personal CRM, you know, a relationship manager, like something that's going, that's going to help remind me to do kind of that uh, maintenance sort of stuff. My wife and I, we found out, you know, like nine or 10 years after marriage and it was like, oh, I have, I have ADHD. So there's that to kind of work out. But my wife has the symptom or, you know, the disorder of having been married to somebody with ADHD for 10 years. And so she has like her other like habits that have developed that are like patterns to figure out, um, which was really great for me because it was like, oh, hey, I'm not just the problem to fix. Like we both have stuff to work together on. If I wanted to have a useful personal knowledge management system, I have to work around the facets of ADHD that require I approach things in that way. It needs to be centralized and I will have issues of you know object permanence, not knowing where did I leave that note? What folder in this 30 levels of nested folder hierarchy did I leave that thing? And that's one of the things I talk a lot about is uh, being able to find anything because you don't need to know everything, but you need to know how to find everything. And being able to resurface that information quickly is one of the most valuable things because I don't want to have to spend all the time to sift through it. And I get distracted sifting through all my folders and no, oh, there's that note on those praying mantis meeting habits again. Let's read that three hours later instead of just let me run a quick search or run some reg regular expressions or something and oh there's the note i was exactly looking for keeping on track keeping in flow a lot of those solutions help mitigate a lot of the potential issues with ADHD, but I wouldn't say it's something that helps me too much with it in day-to-day -day life as much. I have to make it fun or it's just not going to happen. So, you know, one example of this is I made a domestic awesomeness database in Notion because cleaning sucks and cleaning is boring. and I don't want to do cleaning, but I do want to be domestically awesome. I do want to be a good partner. So I got my partner to add a point score for each of the different tasks, like everything around the house across the different rooms, got him to add a score. And so now I connect it up to my daily journal. It's super nerdy, but it works for me. So I've gamified parts of my journaling in my daily system. I will try and make tasks and to do list. And usually that's motivating for me to like do tick boxes and see that satisfying tasks go away, the little sound go away. I tried Habitica for a while because of the gamification effect on getting your getting your stuff done is insanely useful. ADHD looks so different from person to person. Doing the hardest thing in the morning is absolutely just not going to happen. Uh, I need to build momentum throughout the day and my energy picks up in the afternoon. So I need to start the day with those small wins. That's something that works for me. I think 
having some kind of prioritization system as well. You know, I've been doing yearly planning and quarterly planning for a really, really long time. So there's sort of these most important goals that you've got for the quarter or for the month. And if things don't align with that, like it's just distraction. So part of it is the skill of prioritization, right? And kind of tuning out what's what's not important. And then part of it is having a productivity system that you can trust that works for you. And if you hear advice that doesn't work, toss it out the window, right? Everything, uh, the same advice doesn't work for for folks with ADHD. And I think we need to be honest about what works and what doesn't work. And so having one central place where you can see the stuff that is most important for today, I don't need to see what's due next week, right now, today, when I'm doing my work. So I need to find ways to filter out and tune out what is not important. It's just visual noise. It's gonna distract me. We know that I've got a squirrel brain. And if I see that other task that looks more exciting, I'm more likely to do that. So if I can start the day off with something like a, a simple win that's that's kind of fun, that's going to set me up for success. And there's just a lot of productivity advice like that, that before I had ADHD, I would just try and then again, like beat myself up. Like, why isn't this working for me? Clearly it's working for other people. And so I would think that I was the problem. And yeah, really, uh, like Marie said, we need to like figure out what works for us and then take anything else and just throw it in the trash. So like, so that eating the frog first, like I, I like to say, eat the ice cream first, because yeah, to build that momentum, like find that fun thing to get yourself moving, because otherwise, like I find if I'm trying to do the hardest thing first thing in the morning, I'm just I'm there the entire day and just staring at it at the end of the day. Um, and I do think one thing that helps when you when you're like, yeah, but how do I find that thing that works for me? Like nothing seems to work for me. I think one thing that helps is knowing about uh, what Dr. William Dodson calls the interest based uh, nervous system, which is basically how motivation works for people with ADHD. And the idea is that most people that don't have ADHD, they're motivated by things that are important or like rewards and consequences. And those seem like they would motivate us too, but they kind of don't really like sometimes rewards can like, if, but it has to be a really specific type of reward. Like if you tell me like, Hey, if you do this, you're going to get this little reward at the end. And I'm not interested, like making the reward bigger doesn't actually change my motivation. I would feel like it would, but in the reality, it doesn't. Um, and so like the interest-based nervous system is about being motivated by things that are interesting or things that are creative or novel and new. And it can also be things that are challenging. This isn't true for everybody. Like some people like they step back from a challenge, but other people like you told me I can't do it. I'm going to prove you wrong. Uh, and then the final thing is urgency, just because we're so like, we have a hard time understanding time, like we think of it in now and not now. So we kind of don't have like this, like, oh, in four days, in four weeks, and four months, like that's all the same time to my brain. So, but when it shows up, when it's urgent, then suddenly I'm like, oh, like every school paper I ever did, I did the night before that it was due. I did all the work, like an all nighter that, that last night, right before it was due. And then I would still turn it in like, you know, 10 minutes late or whatever somehow, but that urgency, knowing that that urgency motivates me means that I can try to inject that into my life. So I use timers all the time and it's not quite the same because I know I know when this timer ends, like nothing actually happens, but just being able to see time. So I like visual timers, I, I, in Pomodoro, like that really helps motivate me, even if it's not to that same degree, but just because otherwise I won't know that time is passing and four hours will go by and I'm researching the, you know, praying mantis mating habits or whatever it might be. A lot of the usual helpful things for getting tasks and work done doesn't usually work for me like I can't stand Pomodoro because usually and what I usually tell my my partner all the time is if I manage to start doing something that I have had trouble with getting started like because of executive dysfunction and I finally started painting a piece of furniture or something that's, that's a big task that's going to take a lot of build up sometimes I'll put that off for a couple of weeks even though it might only take an hour or two but as soon as I can start doing something if I only said, okay, do that for 25 minutes, then take a five minute break. No, no, uh, -uh no, I ride the wave as long as I can get it. If I can trigger a hyper fixation on something that I've been putting off forever, I don't care if I sit there for 11 hours, I'm going to get as much done on it as I possibly can. While I have 
the horns of the attention going like we're going to stay on this road here i talk about a lot of strategies for actually getting tasks done because i have a ridiculous amount of stuff on my plate as i'm sure everyone else here does too i have uh usually only a couple apps that i rely on because i want to keep things centralized i only want to have a couple sources of truth for what i actually need to be paying attention to and one of them is todoist so basically a task manager i used to use task warrior on linux but i used todoist and I think for my medication, I use MedSafe. Uh, you can actually have it trigger like urgent alerts on your phone. So like, you know how you get those uh, very loud, obnoxious public service announcements and you can't block them. It's like that, but for medication alerts, like it, I keep my phone permanently on silent and I never want to hear it. But this thing will be the only thing that makes a noise, which is helpful because the only time my phone makes noise is when I need to take my damn medication. But like with tasks, I'll use Todoist and I had a strategy that I just threw together. It's not like super robust, but I just called it SCLC. Sift, chunk, lineup, and conveyor belt for my tasks. So with Todoist, I just have all of my daily tasks. Sometimes they have due dates like, you know, wake up 7 a.m., brush your teeth, that kind of stuff. So it's all laid out by time. But sometimes I also just, tomorrow, I need to remember to do this random thing. And that'll be like a, a task I make for myself at midnight the prior day because I'm falling asleep and I just need, I need to get it out of my head, which is always big, is externalize these things, whether it's a note, whether it's a task, whether it's an idea, get it out of your damn head, externalize everything. That way you don't have to hold it in. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to remember it. You don't have to forget it. Like, what was that? And you always know where you can trust to find that, your PKM system, to do this, uh, any application. So I'm big on externalizing absolutely everything. My family does, knows that if it's not on my personal calendar, I'm not doing it. It's not happening. And it doesn't exist to me. If they want to see me, if they want my help with something, they have to get on my calendar. It's like running my personal life like a business, but it's the only way I can be effective. Those are my sources of truth. It's not on the calendar. I'm not doing it. If it's not in my task manager, I won't remember it. If it's not in there, I know that I didn't need to know about it or it didn't happen. If all of these tasks are in Todoist and I have all my stuff, it's a normal daily, you know, chronologically ordered things, but a bu bunch of like random no date due dates, just thoughts into tasks pool sitting there. I could have like 50 tasks for one day. Then executive function starts to say, ah, so all your organized tasks here are looking like a giant pile. You struggle with prioritizing? Good. We're not going to get anything done today. I'm one of those annoying people that's always like, hey, is this going to be recorded? Because uh, if I sit in this and really enjoy it, I'm going to want to put it on again later. And I probably won't take notes the first time I watch it. And then maybe the second time. Uh, another thing I do when I am taking notes, I try to think of it like um, like taking highlights in a book. Like I'm not trying to capture everything, but I'm trying to capture anything that like, uh, I think like surprising, like something that I was like, oh, I hadn't thought of it like that or something that kind of hits me as something like, oh, interesting. That's a unique thing. It's not just like, oh, they have this framework that's like every other framework, but with different words. Like it actually kind of jumps out a little bit. Like I kind of use that as a spark to like, oh, I should write that down because it surprised me. It might not surprise me next time I see this, but that means it was a unique sort of interesting tidbit that is worth writing down and remembering and maybe using elsewhere. Yeah, this is one of the things to talk about when setting up a PKM system is you got to have good uh, ways of implementing quick capture. And one of the things I love about uh, some of the apps that I use uh, namely, I'm just going to use, say uh, Obsidian and Todoist, is that they have quick capture palettes, or at least with Obsidian, there I'm on Mac, so there's the Alfred app, and there's an Alfred workflow made by somebody in the Obsidian community that allows you to do um, Alfred-based quick capture, so you can just append stuff to your daily note in Obsidian through this Alfred workflow. And I use that religiously for um, actually writing my journal in bite-sized increments. Like I could say a sentence, submit that entry, oh, another sentence, and I can just get my you know, words out quickly without having to worry about formatting or anything, or just seeing all the text build up. It's just a single line that just goes. Um, and then to do is, it's just another hotkey, and I have a palette open, and they use NLP, or Natural Language Processing, to define the acronyms. So I can just say in two days, and it just assigns it to two days in the future. I could say in two days at 7 a.m., and it will assign it to that date. I just have to type in natural language, and I can just use there also for priority, P1 for high priority. So I can say 
in two days at 7 a.m., P1, high priority, do the task and fire it off. And I can just do that in literally seconds. So it makes it very easy to quickly capture um, tasks. But I also use that to do as quick capture and various other ways of shortcutting that process, Apple shortcuts or the triple back tap on your phone to trigger a shortcut that opens up to do with a voice, uh, voice to text you know, input and whatever way to do it, but I usually use to do this as like quick prompts. I need to remember to look up the mating habits of the praying mantis. To do this, quickly capture just, hey, that thing. And it will remind me later to look into it more. So I don't always have to completely capture the thought I had or what I want to take a note on. I can sometimes condense it down into something and trigger my memory with enough information that I can uh, give myself those quick hints to trigger that later on when I have the time to devote to it. I mentioned before, like I had a lot of support systems around me. You know, I, I had privilege of like, I could try a lot of things and fail and that was fine. So for me, like hyper-focus let me learn things I never would have been able to learn otherwise. But I think some people that maybe don't have those systems in place or that privilege, like they can't they can't try that stuff. And so like, they're like, Hey, I'm trying to survive doing two or three jobs, you know, at the same time. And it sure doesn't feel like a superpower when I'm failing at just getting like basic things done. If you're at a place where your basic kind of survival needs can be taken place, there are benefits that can, can come with ADHD, but there's a lot of downsides too that are particularly crippling if you don't have kind of those support systems automatic. Those extremes are so big, the crashes come after, right? And so, you know, there, there are trade-offs for sure. So I try to see the positive and, and sort of um, appreciate the parts that are interesting about my ADHD, like making connections really quickly, right? I can move really fast, I can adapt really quickly. That's great, but overall, I think it is kind of um, unfair to call it a superpower. A lot of what I spend my time on is the stuff that I want to spend my time on. And I work in a field that I enjoy. I work in IT, so technology is endless learning. It's endless stimulation. I will be able to work in that career for decades. Um, and my channel talks a lot about stuff around that domain as well. So my notes are about a lot of that as well. Basically, everything in my life revolves around things that I also am very easily able to get hyper fixated on. And um, thanks to just a lot of concerted effort and support from my partner, I've gotten better about disengaging from hyperfocus when I need to and kind of trying to pop back into it. Energy management is so important. I used to like, like beat myself up again for like, like, oh, that's going to waste too much time to do it that way. And it's like, I needed to recognize like, it's not about managing time for me. It's about managing the energy. So for me, like doing a chore, like the dishes or taking out the trash, I queue up a podcast to listen to every single time, even though it's like a 30, 40 second task. Because if I force myself to just take out the trash without putting on that podcast for 40 seconds, then two days later, I'm going to stop and never, ever do that task again. So for me, it's really important to kind of like make the routine easy and kind of manage my own energy so that it's I'm having, you know, pos positive vibes the whole time. Everything about my task management is designed around my energy. Even when I input a task into my system, it's like, is this a deep work or, a, you know, a process driven task? What kind of energy does this require? So I didn't really realize that that was maybe ADHD related. So yeah, my whole day is, is based around that. I have to be really honest with myself if I'm not feeling it today. So rather than that tension of fighting myself, I say, let's be honest that this is not going to happen today. What can I do to tackle some of those, those small wins off my list? So I just kind of roll with it a little bit. And uh, I focus on the bigger picture of what needs to get done this week that's most important, not so much on a day-to-day -day basis. So I try to be a little bit more uh, compassionate with myself. I try to build systems and they always crash and burn. Like I have, I have, I went through my notion, like, I don't know, a few months back and I have just like abandoned pages that are like, I had one that was like recipes and there was one thing in there and it had no information. It was just like the name of some food, I guess I wanted to make. Um, so I have that problem a lot. I like to kind of embrace what I call uh, the pivot, which is just like, I try to kind of 
surface level use these systems because I know I'm going to get pulled to something more interesting. And so rather than trying to make my system perfect and having all the right automations, I try to make my system portable and really easy to so that when I see this shiny new cool thing I want to try out, I can easily kind of transfer my stuff there without fearing that I'm going to lose stuff. So that's what I do. I, I have to keep my systems really surface level so I can plan for the pivot. I think it took a long time to build a system that I felt worked for me. And again, part of that is it needs to be beautiful, needs to be visual. So I've got my journal, my tasks today with custom icons, like I'm a designer. Like I just need to see things in a way that clicks for my brain. And that took a little bit of time uh, for me. I was willing to put in that time because I needed something that I could trust and rely on. So, I mean, it took me probably a year, year and a half to really feel like, oh, I've got a system that works all the freaking time. And uh, for me, it was worth it. But I, I do recognize that that stuff can take a bit of time. We can blame our system. We can waste a lot of time tinkering, which is not helpful, but uh, it does take a bit of time. And again, learning about that energy management, learning that there's ways to actually organize my tasks in a way that works for my brain just took a little bit of time. If I'd known I had ADHD, maybe I would have <laughs> built the system a little bit differently from the beginning but uh, finally found a system that worked for me.